Hi, my name's Ava Wolf, and I'm working on the synthesis of nanostructured photocatalysts for solar hydrogen production. Due to the current climate and energy crises, people are continuously looking for ways to produce clean and renewable energy sources such as hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas as an energy source can be produced via water splitting using solar energy in the presence of a photocatalyst. Photocatalysts are made of semiconductor materials, and semiconductors have energy levels called bands. The valence band is the highest energy band electrons can occupy when a semiconductor is in the ground state, and the conduction band is the lowest vacant energy level in a semiconductor material. The valence and conduction bands are separated by a band gap, which is an energy range with no electronic states. When an electron is excited from the valence band to the conduction band, a hole, which is the absence of an electron, is formed in the valence band. The diagram in the background section shows an electron being excited to the conduction band in a cadmium sulfide semiconductor when light is introduced. This electron can be used in redox reactions such as the reduction of water to form hydrogen gas. However, the electron and hole may recombine before the electron is able to participate in the reduction reaction, but adding a co-catalyst to the system such as nickel sulfide can increase the amount of time it takes for electron hole recombination by providing a surface for the electron to migrate to before recombination can occur. The literature has reported that hydrogen production rates and photocatalyst stability can be improved by encapsulating photocatalyst co-catalyst systems inside the pores of zeolites. Zeolites are aluminosilicate microporous crystalline supports, and the microporous structure of zeolite Y, the zeolite used in this project, is shown in an image in the background section. The increased hydrogen production rates reported in the literature for zeolite encapsulated photocatalyst systems are likely due to zeolite Lewis acid sites further preventing fast electron hole recombination and the zeolite pore structure promoting increased contact between the photocatalyst and co catalyst. In this project, we report the synthesis of cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide in a zeolite NAY support. The ion exchange synthesis technique used is depicted in the methods section. Part of the aluminosilicate structure of zeolite NAY is shown in the diagram. Aluminum introduces negative charge into the zeolite framework, which is counterbalanced by cations such as sodium. The sodium ions can be exchanged for other cations such as cadmium or nickel ions. We use ion exchange techniques to incorporate cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide in zeolite Y. First, we added zeolite Y to an aqueous solution with a cadmium precursor so sodium ions could be exchanged for cadmium ions. Next, we exchanged some of the cadmium ions for nickel ions and then added sodium sulfide to the solution to react with the cadmium and nickel to form cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide and to reincorporate sodium ions in the zeolite framework. This technique uses water as a solvent rather than organic solvents, which can be harmful to the environment. In addition to simultaneously incorporating cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide in zeolite NAY, samples of cadmium sulfide in NAY and nickel sulfide in NAY were synthesized as well. We analyzed these samples using different techniques, including ultraviolet visible diffuse reflecting, reflectance spectroscopy, X-ray diffraction, and Raman spectroscopy. The UV-Vis DRS data shown at the top of the results section indicates the presence of nickel sulfide and cadmium sulfide in zeolite NAY due to differences in the spectra for cadmium sulfide in NAY, nickel sulfide in NAY, and just NAY. The UV-Vis DRS data also gives information about the band gaps of the cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide particles formed. The band gap of cadmium sulfide was calculated to be 2.29 electron volts, and the band gap of nickel sulfide was calculated to be 3.48 electron volts. This band gap data confirms that the cadmium sulfide particles will absorb visible light, and the nickel sulfide particles will not absorb visible light and will only act as a surface for excited electrons in the cadmium sulfide to migrate to. XRD data is shown in the middle of the results section. Similar XRD peaks among the four samples indicate that the zeolite structure was retained after the incorporation of cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide. 
The sample with cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide in NaY shows both a peak for the 102 plane of cadmium sulfide and a peak for the 201 plane of nickel sulfide, which indicates that nickel sulfide and cadmium sulfide were successfully incorporated in zeolite NaY simultaneously. The small XRD peaks for cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide suggest that nanoparticles were formed, although further analysis such as transmission electron microscopy will be necessary to prove or disprove this. The Raman spectroscopy data shown at the bottom of the results section shows a cadmium sulfide peak at 300 centimeters inverse for the cadmium sulfide in NAY sample, and a nickel sulfide peak at 283 centimeters inverse for the nickel sulfide in NAY sample. The sample with both cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide in NAY has a peak at 293 centimeters inverse, which is in between the cadmium sulfide peak and the nickel sulfide peak. This further indicates the successful simultaneous incorporation of cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide in zeolite NAY. One future direction we'll explore is using X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy to determine, determine the valence band energy for the cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide particles formed to better understand the band gap structure of these materials. We will also use transmission electron microscopy to learn about particle size and to determine if the cadmium sulfide and nickel sulfide are actually encapsulated or if they are also present on the zeolite surface. We plan to use PET to analyze the zeolite pore size change before and after the incorporation of the photocatalyst system to give more information about whether the sulfides are encapsulated or not. We also plan to run photocatalytic water splitting reactions with the synthesized samples to observe hydrogen production rates and photostability. I would like to acknowledge the David and Lorraine Freed Undergraduate Research Symposium, and I would like to thank Professor McIntosh, Boyan Kim, and other current and former members of the McIntosh Lab. Thank you.